Hey YouTube, RP here, welcome to my channel. I've been printing uh, for quite a few years now and I never have really considered the quality of the air in my workspace when my printers are running. If you've ever wondered about that, stick around. I've got some things that I've done that you might be interested in. Okay, so there are a lot of different things that you can look at in terms of enclosures for printers. This is just Amazon and it's just uh, showing you, you know, <laughs> how many options are out there. So it's clearly uh, picking up traction and popularity to, you know, put these things in enclosures, especially the, the, the smaller printers, um, there are some bigger printers that are not enclosures, but um, uh, it, there's a lot out there. That's really kind of the point here. But what I have actually found, and you can do your own research. <clears throat> this is going to vary by individual preference, but this uh, organ, this company called um, Fundo 3D, uh, they provide some pretty amazing product, and I, I want to show you. Uh, the printers that I have, I have two printers. Uh, I have a CR, a Creality CR10S. It's probably a mid-range printer. Uh, the print bed is uh, 300 by 300 by 400. And then I also have an Elegoo Neptune 3 Max. This thing is massive. It's 420 by 420 by 500. And the printers are awesome. So they're both, of course, not enclosed. And I wanted to get something that would enclose them very nicely. So I went with uh, the Fundo 3D. And uh, the thing that's nice about these is that there's a lot of different options with uh, these specific enclosures in terms of where you can place your venting. Uh, you can place it in the back. You can place it on the side. Uh, it has uh, self-sealable zippers uh, to keep things really tight. Now, is this going to be foolproof? No. But it's going to be a lot better than just keeping the printer out in the open. Um, you can see that, uh, you know, this specific enclosure, $249, it's not cheap. Uh, the material is high quality. It's fireproof, so if there's ever a concern with that, it'll, it'll contain uh, that type of fire. Um, and then you can exhaust it or vent it. It comes with its own um, ventilation or exhaust kit that you can simply run out of the printer enclosure and you can, you know, pipe it out a window through a dryer vent. Um, uh, and I'll show you exactly how I did that. We'll get into all the costs and everything and, and uh, you know, what that all entails. But um, I did go with this large one because the, the Elegoo printer is massive and you're going to need a big enclosure to have enough room for the bed to move back and forth and do everything that you need to need to do. Uh, with um, my smaller printer, uh, not exactly the, if it's going to be on here or not, uh, but I'll show it to you. It, it was something similar to one of these smaller ones. Um, so let's, uh, let me just show you kind of how I got this set up and, and, uh, what I, uh, what I did and what that's looking like. Here's where I have my printer set up. Got this table and this is one of the boxes that's going to house, uh, one of my printers. So the table space is great. It fits both of my printers, as you can see, and I can put everything underneath that I need to, like my filament. I've got that great window back there that I can vent out of. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dryer vent adapter and window plug, and I'm going to put that, install that into the window, and then I'm going to connect those printers to that uh, dryer vent outlet. And uh, that should work perfect um, once I get that installed. It comes with the printers themselves come with, or I should say the enclosures come with a kit and then you can see where they attach here. The material is high quality, uh, as you can see, they're very durable and um, the zippers are really nice. The framing was really easy to put together. It pulled over the framing very, very nicely. 
uh, a lot of complaints out there that the uh, material doesn't go over the framing very well. But that, this got set up really nicely. Now I just need to get that window vent installed and um, get that ready to go so that when I put together the rest of my printer enclosures, uh, we are good to go here and uh, get that taken care of. So that's now installed in the base of the window and it just exhausts right out. And right between the window and this insert, I'm going to put some weather stripping to completely seal that in so that there's just no air coming in from up at the top and down at the bottom. And then I've now got to get my small CR-10S into this large enclosure and then put together that bad boy over there, which is going to hold this massive Neptune 3 Max. So let me try to get this up on the table and show you what that looks like. And there we have it. It is enclosed. Nice LED. You can turn the LED off. I'm gonna arrange where these switches are so that's off. This is on. And then the cover comes down. It fully encloses. And I'll show you, like I talked about with these zippers, how they self kind of seal. There's a nice rubber boot that seals around them. And you've got uh, great visibility in there to see how your prints are going. I, I may move my filament spool to the top. I've got plenty of room up there. But it, even though it's tight, um, that will work. It will feed nicely into the extruder. And it's got enough room to go right up there by that fan. And you can see that the uh, build plate goes all the way back. And I don't want to pull it too fast comes all the way to the front and still has plenty of space. In fact, I could push this back even a little bit more if I needed to. The other cool feature, which I don't know how well it works, I haven't tested it yet, is there is a temperature gauge and humidity gauge on this. You just a little watch battery that you can replace. But that will help also with, the, you know, telling you how heated the chamber is and how well it's retaining heat. So as far as air mitigation is concerned, I'm really happy with this. To get this exhaust fan in, there are a few components here. You have the uh, component that the, uh, the actual exhaust tube fits onto. And then you have the fan motor with the plug and then on this side, you have a boot that is hard plastic on one side and soft EVA foam on the other. The screws go in from this side, and then there will be a washer and a nut that tighten this down and make a, a nice tight seal into that opening. Um, before I get those screws on, you'll want to put on uh, this faceplate so the screws will actually go through this faceplate and connect onto here. What this is, is an additional um, filter. It will produce less airflow and it has a little mini micro filter in there. Probably doesn't do much of anything at all, but that just snaps onto this receiving part. So let me put this together and I'll show you what this all looks like. And there you have it. Makes a nice seal. Won't let anything out. This will suck the air out. And this is attached with the washer and nut. I'll just have to plug that into the fan switch and use this ring to attach the hose vent 
to the receptacle. And like I said, you can determine and decide whether or not you want to keep that filter in there. And so that just snaps into place. And now we have filtration. Let me get the hose vent and the power connected here. We are all connected now. And if I turn on the vent, it has different power settings, max, all the way to min. You can hear that fan and you can feel it pulling the air. Um, just to show you that it is pulling air. There you go. It's holding that piece of paper up. And that is now ex exhausting or venting right out the back window. Now there is a damper which I'm going to install on that back end which will close when the air is not being pushed out or sucked out and that will prevent more cold from coming in so I am going to install that but I just wanted to get this set up for now first test print we're gonna get this going it's just a small little planter box that I'm making and see how this how this does we'll turn on the fan you know, just a little bit more than medium we'll hit start the print has started and that led light is nice and bright you can see there's good layer adhesion now i just need to let it run its course and see how it does. The print turned out, looked pretty good. Turn off the fan. We'll unzip. Here, here. Looks great. It's just gonna be a little planter box, nothing big. So, the point of all this is that uh, this box works amazing. That spool fed into the extruder grate, everything works great. There's the Y joint connected going out to the main vent outside. And this is now connected to the back of this larger printer box, which I'm going to push back into closer to the window. And we've got this printer already hooked up. Let's, uh, let's get this all pushed back in and see how this looks. And there we have it. It is installed. So everything is working really nicely. I did a little bit of cable management. I've got my exhaust ventilation fan switches here. I have installed my LED light switches down here. All I've done is ran them in to one of these zippers and you know there's a pretty good seal there it's it's not going to leak okay i guess you could say it would leak it's not going to be horrible this is so much better than just leaving a printer out in the open but uh i've got the power cord going out there um the light switch so that's easy to access same thing light switch in here uh, i move that inside um, i also have a camera that will monitor this. I've got my other camera over there that is going to go inside of this box. And this closes up nicely with the, uh, with the front flap. You've got amazing visibility in there with the light. Now, I guess you could say, well, what if you wanna turn the light off while it's printing? 
yeah, I guess uh, you'd have to, you know, open this up, put your hand in, turn the light on and off. The reason I didn't put the lights on the outside is, um, you know, the, the length of the cords was different. I, I guess I could have run a different extension cord. Um, and now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, maybe that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, but anyway, the, the, just to give you an example, this switch, you know, would, would come way back here because it ran out of, ran out of cord where this, this switch would actually come up here. A anyway, I, I can probably figure that out. That may not be, now that I'm thinking about it, the best place, but you get the idea. This is very customizable. Um, they look fantastic. And as you saw earlier, the print on this one worked amazingly well. So if you ever want to know how to uh, clean your air up, uh, this is it. And uh, I'll go through uh, some of the costs uh, involved with this so that everybody, uh, you know, knows what they're getting into. And I'll list all of the links where I got the parts down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, let's talk quickly about costs. Um, it's not cheap. Uh, I think the uh, benefit far outweighs the costs, but this is something you just have to decide if you want to do it or not. I'm into this just a little over $500. So, um, you know, the things that you're going to need to get are that Y joint. That's not super expensive. It's really the um, enclosures that run the most amount of money that was probably about four hundred and sixty dollars in total uh but you know it's up to you do you want to do it or not it doesn't matter i'm not i'm not trying to sell this to anybody i'm just saying this is what i did it worked for me it makes me feel better um there you go so hopefully you found this video helpful uh, i've got uh, my large printer running right now and i'm able to stay in the room and everything's venting out great um, I will put all of the links to the individual products and everything down below so that you can, you know, go check them out. Um, so uh, drop a comment, like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope you found this video and thanks for watching.